Hello everyone, this is Liz with AC QuickBooks Training. Thank you for visiting my channel today. In today's video, I will show you step by step how we can record a new truck purchase in QuickBooks Online. So let's get started. Before we record the new vehicle, we need to have a couple of items. We need to have a purchasing agreement and we need to have an amortization schedule. Usually an amortization schedule um, is given by the finance company and it's separate from your monthly statement. Other finance companies will have the monthly principal and monthly interest broken down on the statement. But if you don't have any of these two, in the description below, I have put a link to my amortization schedule in Excel, and I will show you how to fill this out using this sample. So let's go to um, QuickBooks and let's start recording uh, the two new accounts that we need to record this um, purchase. We need to have a fixed asset account and I have created one already. This is for the 2020 Ford van, cargo van. And I usually put the last four VIN numbers at the end as well to identify the vehicle. And it's a fixed asset account type and detail type is vehicle. I also have a long-term liabilities account because this is, um, this note is longer than one year. And I have it under detail type notes payable. Same description. Now that I have my two accounts set up, I can go and get the information from the purchase agreement. Usually I get the cash price and any fees associated with that, like sales tax, uh, vehicle registration, anything that is all included within the total or subtotal price. So in this case, I have to record 41675 uh, 675.69. So I'm going to do a journal entry to record that. And I'm going to select the date of 010121. Oh, let me try that again. 010121. And my first account um, will be the fixed asset account. I'm going to debit this account for 41675.69. My description is going to be to record purchase of 2020 cargo van. My second account is going to be the liability accounts that we created, the notes payable. And QuickBooks usually fills it in for you. So I have credit at 41675.69 and same description. I'm okay with that. The next step is to record um, the down payment. So if I go back into my purchase agreement, I show that this vehicle had a manufacturer's rebate of 5,500 and a cash equivalent of 5,000. Going back to the journal entry I did, I'm going to record the 5,500 against the same two accounts, lowering my total cost of the vehicle. But the first account that I want to enter here is um, my debit account would be the liability account. I'm going to lower the liability account by 5,500 and I'm going to delete that and put to record oops, rebate of 2020 Ford cargo van. And then in the next line item, I'm going to put the liability account. I'm sorry, the fixed asset account, not the liability. So it's going to credit that save and close. Um, this is looking good. Let's now record the check that I used for the cash equivalent. It's going to be a four dealer. 
and for my category I'm going to put the liability account the notes payable and it's going to be 5,000 it's coming from the checking account save and close now let's go into the registers and make sure that all the information we've entered is correct let's go into our fixed asset first and we are showing an increase of 41,675.69 that's our subtotal before any rebates and then it shows the decrease of the rebate and it gives us a total uh, fixed asset amount of 36,175 so that is looking good let's go back to the account for the liability and see how that is looking let's look at the register so we have the 41,000 uh, which is the initial total purchase with the two decreases um, which is the check that we gave the cash equivalent and the rebate making our amount financed of 31,175.69 and we can confirm that and make sure that that is the correct amount we need to have on there by looking at our purchase contract here and it says 31,175.69 so that is our amount purchased so that is correct so now that we have um, recorded our vehicles um, recorded the vehicle now we can set up our monthly amortization schedule so I'll go ahead and pull up the Excel sheet and show you how to fill that out but before I do that let's uh, quickly go into uh, the balance sheet and see how these two accounts um, are brought up on the balance sheet so we see under fixed asset the cargo van that is the correct amount and then under long-term liabilities our notes payable we see 31,175.69 so it looks good on our balance sheet okay let me pull up the excel sheet and I'll walk you how to fill that out okay so I have the excel sheet up and I have my purchase contract up I'm going to start filling some information here and um, this is for my records and I usually put the interest rate in case I need it later on I don't have to um, open up my purchase contract amount finance we know it's the 31 175 69 that same um, amount finance will be going into this yellow box which is our starting balance um, 31 175 69 and the Excel sheet will automatically uh, fill in what the balance is now we don't have the total payment here entered yet so it's just entering all these um, uh, the same balance this Excel sheet has um, formulas so just take note of that and just be careful um, about the formulas now on our purchase uh, contract it says that our monthly payments are going to be 60 payments of 618.21 beginning February 14th of 2021 um, for my records I'm going to put that monthly amount here and then I'm going to enter it under total amount um, for the month here and I'm just going to copy this cell all the way down it should be copied the same and we can quickly check that yep it looks like every single month is 61821 and for the interest here here is the formula I'm going to delete the zero and enter 6.94 it will change the interest amount to the correct amount and then we can just copy this all the way down because it's going to copy the formula all as it as we entered it as we enter the 6.94 it's going to copy it all the way down and as you can see the balance um, the, the balance are the balance is changing per the the amount that we have here and we also want to change the date now it says the first month is the 14th of February 21 I'm going to also copy it all the way down 
to payment 60. Then there's this box that shows up, which is the autofill option. I click on it and I want the Excel to fill in the months for me. As you can see, it changed it to the correct monthly date. It's going to be on the same date every month, which is fine. That's when it's due. Now I'm going to show you how to record um, the first payment in QuickBooks. And essentially it's the same, um, the same way every single month. So I'm going to do a new expense. If you write a check, you can do new check. I'm going to use the February 14th as my date. The, for, the first category here is going to be my liability notes payable account. And in my Excel sheet, I have um, just written down this description real quick, which is the principal that I'm going to pay. And according to this amortization schedule, I'm going to um, apply 437.91. And then I'm going to do interest expense and I'm going to copy this description and just put it there. And according to this amortization schedule, it's 180.30, making my total payment of 618.21. Now, once I save that and I go into, let me make this a little bit bigger. I go into my liability, we should be able to see uh, a reduced amount of 437.91. And we could see it here. It went from what our total amounts finance was to the applying the first payment. Um, now, a lot of people make the mistake of including the interest rate against the amount financed. The interest rate is does not lower um, the amount financed. That is that goes on your profit and loss, and that's an expense. The interest is an expense. We only want to apply the principal amount here. And so it says the balance is 30, uh, 30,737. Uh, 737.78 and if we look here that is what this Excel sheet says so I'm just going to put an X just to mark that I have completed or entered the first payment into QuickBooks and I'll wait for the next month and enter and do the same um, expense transaction to keep lowering my um, liability balance. I hope that this video has helped you. Please don't forget to subscribe for more how-tos, tips and tricks and troubleshooting for QuickBooks. I will see you on the next one.